Welcome to the track. Um, Rafael Wasaki, uh, Intel Open Source Technology Center. Everyone prob probably doesn't need an introduction. Linux power management maintainer, a CPI maintainer. Uh, works on Rafael standard time and we have still not defined what that is. And I've uh, worked with Rafael in the past uh, on ACPI standards and such. Always a consistent supporter of what's best for the industry and I've always really enjoyed working with him. And we look forward to hearing from you now and questions during are just fine. Uh, five minutes before we're gonna swap um, for the next speakers, but um, Rafael will continue his Q&A, but that's just so we don't lose time for the laptop setup. And with that, Uh, let me switch over to the presentation mode with that. Uh, presentation mode. Okay. No share. Well, fine. Hmm? Let's see if I can. Oh, yeah, I can do it. Okay, so. Uh, um, I, I might just I might just go down to the floor. It's like I don't like setups like that where I about the people I talk to. So uh, thanks for the int introduction. Oh, I, I'm too close to the speaker apparently. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Darren. Uh, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I, I won't repeat that. So to, I've been among other things I do. I've been maintaining uh, the infrastructure for power management in the kernel for a while like some 10 years now. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to, to, to talk about one thing uh, related to that, which is how to combine different pieces of it together. <laughs> they, it consists of different pieces that were developed at different times by different people that may not be uh, like designed to work with each other. So you, it, there are some cases in which you have to do some extra work to, to, to do that. Okay, so first off, all of that is about, uh, uh, no, it's counting over there, the speaker there. Uh, all of that is about uh, energy efficiency. Energy efficiency meaning optimizing the usage of energy so that it, it is not wasted, basically, right? So we, we want to use as much energy as necessary to do certain things, but we d don't want to sacrifice a lot of performance for that, usually. All right, so the photo illustrates three ways of moving around, like in the bottom, uh, well, so that would be this one. Like here, in the, uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, you have people walking, you have a guy riding a bicycle and a guy riding a, an electric vehicle, which is a, Lime scooter, I guess. So, question to the audience for, as, as a matter of warm up, which of the three ways of moving around is the most energy efficient? Bicycle. Bicycle. Well, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the, yes, the bicycle, but that depends on the distance. If the distance is short enough, you, 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 you are better off by, by walking, right, than riding a bicycle. But if you want to get somewhere you know, far away, yes, the bicycle is the, the most ener energy efficient way to do that. Okay. So in Linux, if you want to, uh, as I said, prevent energy from being wasted, there are two ways to do that. One way operates on the system-wide basis uh, it's, it's referred to as the system-wide power management and it's, it's based on, on putting the system as a whole into suspend or hibernation, uh, like that, right? So the entire system is, goes into a low power state in a hopefully ordered way. Uh, now, the, 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 the other way is to, is to uh, operate individual devices and, and uh, either either suspend them or reduce their capacity uh, while the system as a whole does some useful work. So devices are not in use, we just turn them off. Uh, okay, so that, that is kind of analogous to the two ways of getting you know, from one side of a river to the other side illustrated here in the photo. 
So the, the closed background is a bridge. Uh, obviously, you can use it to get from that side of the river to the other one. And there's a ferry w in the foreground, which also can be used for the same purpose. So the bridge is kind of a, an obvious thing, right? It's there, you can use it. So now the question is, why would anyone need a ferry for in, in, that, in that situation? Well, the answer is that the ferry <laughs> covers a different use case, right? It is a, if you don't want to walk up the bridge and you know, walk it and so on, you might just use the ferry to get from one point on, 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 on one riverbank to the other quickly. And it is more fun. So, so there are different use cases, and, and this is similar to the, uh, to the energy efficiency use cases. So if you don't, if your system is in use, like my laptop right now uh, for displaying the slides, but it doesn't do anything else, so I basically want the other devices on it to be in low power states. Uh, whether or not that's, that ha this happens, actually, I, I'm not sure, but the, this is the idea, right? If I stop using it and close the lid and put it into my bag, I don't want it to do anything. And that's the other use case. That's for system-wide power management, for system, okay? So, there are different use cases and different ways to do things. Uh, PM runtime is part of the, of the uh, power management in the system working state in which work is done in general. So it is, uh, you, you can consider it as a, uh, as a power management coordination framework, essentially. Because what it, ha what it ha helps to do is to coordinate different, uh, different power management operations uh, done or carried out on different devices with each other. So there are dependencies between devices, there are uh, code layers doing different things. All of that needs to be coordinated. And that's what the PM runtime is for. So PM runtime defines uh, meta states for devices. One of them is suspended, one of them is active. Active is a meta state in which the device can, can process data. It, it is accessible to software and so on. Uh, suspended is a, is a meta state in which the device is uh, may not be accessible. It, it doesn't do anything, it may not be accessible, you can't assume that you can actually access it in any way. It depends on the bus, driver, uh, device type, and so on, but uh, that, that's a general notion. Okay, so there are two operations, leading from suspended to active is resume, and leading from active to, susp uh, to suspended is obviously suspend. So there are two transient meta states corresponding to these two transitions. So the device is resuming when the resume operation is in progress and the device is suspending when this is in progress. Uh, so the role, one of the roles of the P of PM runtime is to prevent uh, those operations from taking place at the same time, right? It's the, it has to, or even you, it, it has to prevent two suspend operations from being attempted in, 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 in a row, like on the same device. So it has to, uh, it, it has to track the state of the device, the, uh, or rather the meta state of the device, so that, uh, so that those things happen at the right times. Okay, there is one more thing. So if, if, uh, if the device appears to be idle to, uh, to, a driver, to the driver core or any piece of the kernel uh, code, it can invoke as a, I, or initiate the third operation defined in, P, in the PM runtime framework, which is the idle check. So it, the, there is an event which triggers this, and then the, uh, the operation is started, and then it checks if it is desirable to suspend the device right now, or maybe it, it, uh, some delay is necessary or something like that. Okay, so that's it. So, and that, uh, 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 again, as I said, that, that takes care of the dependencies between devices and so on. So the system-wide power management is kind of more complicated, which you can figure out uh, from this diagram. Uh, actually, uh, this is a working state in which uh, PM runtime uh, lives. There are two system suspend flows here. Uh, one of them is, is, is a traditional platform-based suspend with all of the 
uh, operations uh, involve uh, illustrated. The other is suspend to idle. This is a new thing, or relatively new, with respect to this one. So the only difference is this part here uh, in which the mm, CPUs were uh, basically put offline and a platform was invoked to, uh, to uh, turn to, to remove power from everything, like to turn everything off. But in this case, just the, the, the suspend to idle simply leaves uh, the processors or CPUs in idle states in, with the assumption that the hardware will do the right thing and, and, and put itself into, into a deep enough power state uh, if, er, if, if everything is idle. Okay, so the, from the device uh, power management perspective, they are analogous. So there are, in each cycle, like here or here, there are two transitions of the whole system. One of them is suspending the whole system and the other one is the resume of the system, right? Uh, so the, the entire system goes to, uh, is suspended in this transition and in this transition. Uh, that may happen at any time. So th th there is a difference between, uh, this is the most like important difference between PM runtime and, uh, and the system wide thing. This can happen at, at any time, so the, the so devices may be in the in the in the, how to say uh, may be processing data when this happens. So there may be a queue of requests. The device, the driver of the device is handling, and the system suspend is triggered by user space. So it, it may be triggered uh, while this operation is in progress. So drivers have to take care of it. Uh, there are other things that has to be ca taken care of because of that. So there are four, four phases of each transition. In each phase, all of the devices in the system are sort of visited in each phase. And uh, there, there is a callback that may be invoked for uh, each of them in each phase. Uh, um, there are not, I, I, I'm not aware of uh, any devices like th that actually are uh, handled in a, in a meaningful way in all of the phases here, but the different devices th th may use different phases or, or are handled in different phases. And analogously, during system resume, there also are four uh, phases, uh, and in each phase, uh, the, the, the driver core walks all, all the, uh, the, the whole device hierarchy. Each device is visited, and, each, and there is a callback that may be invoked for each of them. Uh, okay, so now there is some, the, 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 uh, s s from the beginning, there has been some coordination between PM runtime and system-wide power management. Historically, PM runtime was introduced first, uh, no, second, the, the system-wide power management was introduced in the beginning, PM runtime was added later. So there are devices, uh, or rather I, I should say there are device drivers that only support system-wide power management which is kind of mandatory. So if the kernel is built with uh, system-wide power management support, which means the uh, config PM sleep, config option is set, all of the drivers are expected to support system-wide power management. At the same time, PM runtime is optional. So drivers may or may not support it. Yeah, optional, okay. So uh, there is some coordination between this and, and, and PM runtime. And the coordination is that at the beginning, uh, the uh, sus runtime suspend operations are blocked for all devices. In the, in the, in the phase, actually I should say in the, in the first phase. Uh, uh, runtime suspend operations are blocked, so you can't runtime suspend, or devices can't be runtime suspended while this is running, which is good because then uh, the, the runtime suspend may happen in the, uh, at the wrong time with respect to the system-wide callbacks and so on. So, but uh, runtime resume can still happen. The reason why is because in some cases it is necessary to resume devices from runtime suspend when the system as a whole is suspending. Uh, and so, for example, the runtime suspend may, may 
uh, run in parallel with, the, with this phase, but in this phase, the, the, the PM runtime is, is disabled entirely for all devices and enabled in this phase. And analogous is here, right? That this is when the PM, run, when PM runtime is disabled for all devices and it, it is enabled here. Uh, th that is problematic because, well, more on that later, so, okay. There are things that we would like to happen which are not strictly necessary, but from the energy efficiency point of view and from the point of view of, uh, of the uh, like suspend performance, I mean the system suspend performance, which means we want system suspend transitions and re system resume transitions to, to be fast. Like to, they, we want them to take uh, as little time as possible. So for example, suspended devices uh, should be handled transparently. I mean that if the device is suspended by PM runtime, when the system suspend starts, it would be best to actually leave the device in suspend, right, without touching it even. Because it is suspended, we can leave it like that. Analogously, during the resume of the system, we want the devices that were previously suspended to stay in suspend because we, it, there is no need to touch them, generally speaking. There, there, there are uh, cases in which they actually have to be touched, but again, more on it later. So we want the, the suspended devices to be handled transparently, generally speaking, okay? The other thing is, uh, is uh, callback reuse. So I, I'm, I, uh, the title of the slide is PM Runtime Callback Reuse. Actually, I think that it would be more appro appropriate to say uh, callback reuse in general because the, for some devices, uh, the PM Runtime Handling is the same as the suspend wide suspend resume handling. It's input devices are like that, character devices in general. It, you, you do the same thing for, for suspending them the, during the, in the working state of the system and during the system-wide operations. There are devices in, for which that cannot be done, but for, for, uh, there is a lot of devices for which. Actually, this slide is uh, uh, sort of related. So this is an old factory which has been turned into a modern business park, sort of, by adding some new architecture and you know remodeling things. So this is like a reuse of uh, of something that existed before. So I would think rather that the drivers that support system-wide power management already may want to use the same callbacks for PM runtime, for example. So we want those two things. There are complications, obviously. Uh, one of them is the, is, or, or not one of them, it, the, there is a couple of limitations coming from how the uh, power management of devices is organized, generally speaking. So uh, there are dependencies between devices. So the, the blue part of the diagram is the device hierarchy or, or, or a small piece of it, actually. Uh, parents are above children, the double-headed arrows are go, go from children to parents and the uh, obviously, the dependencies go the, go both ways because the ordering during <coughs> suspend whatever it is suspend uh, uh, runtime suspend or or during system wide suspend uh, the suspend ordering is is a reverse of the resume ordering so the ordering uh, requirements go both ways uh, there may be links between devices in addition to the parent child relationships. This is a device link, it can be added, and again, it represents a dependency. It doesn't matter, for this diagram, it doesn't matter which way it goes. So, so say this device may be a supplier and this device may be a consumer, uh, it, and which means that the uh, consumer has to be suspended before the supplier and the supplier has to be resumed before the consumer. So there are dependencies, and they have to be taken into account, always. Uh, now, the, there is uh, also uh, a complication related to how the, to, to, to the, uh, to the, to the structure of, of the power management code in the kernel. Uh, 
so the driver car is invoked for all of the operations, like the runtime suspend, runtime resume, for all of the phases of the uh, system, system suspend and resume transition. Uh, what it does, it looks for a callback to carry out each of the operations. Uh, and the, it looks for that callback at the uh, highest level, uh, at the highest level where it, where it can be defined, which means in the layer of code that I refer to as the middle layer, because it's between drivers and the device drivers and the driver car, and that may be device types, device, uh, device classes, bus types, and PM domains. So uh, the, the driver car looks into that layer for a callback, and then if it's there, it will invoke it. Uh, if it's not there, it will look into the driver and invoke a callback from a driver directly, but, but as a rule, it first looks at the middle layer. Uh, the class and type case is not interesting here because the, uh, all of the PM handling is, is uh, class specific or type specific, so they have to coordinate runtime PM with, uh, or PM runtime with uh, suspend, uh, with, with system-wide power management by themselves, so all the classes and types have, have to do that in, the, in, the, in, the, in their own ways. The, inter the interesting and complicated case is when there is a bus and there are drivers which handle devices on that bus or with, the, with this bus type. Uh, what happens here is that the driver core calls, say, carries out a suspend operation, okay, or one of the phases of system-wide suspend, runtime suspend or system-wide. So it first looks for a callback here in a bus. If it is there, uh, it will be run. And that callback is responsible for running a driver callback in that case. But it may also access the device and do something to it. The PCI power management is a good example of that. PCI, the PCI layer uh, handles all of the standard PCI power management. The drivers don't need to do that. So the PCI layer will, will program the P, P, PCMCSR, PMCSR as the register of PCI devices and uh, in order to, pro, uh, to program them into say a low power state. And drivers need to do something in addition to it. So for example, stop the queues and all of that. The, so drive the, the bus type callback usually invokes the driver callback first and then do, does something to the device uh, to put it in, into a low power state. That's how it works as a rule. Sometimes there are differences between bus types, but anyway. The, the thing to remember is that the, the bus type callbacks may want to access the device directly without, without even you know, involving the driver. Okay, if, the, if bus, there may not be callbacks in a bus type for, for power management. Th there are bus types where, where, or buses where the bus protocol doesn't, doesn't define power management operations at all. In that case, there are no callbacks here and, a dri and the driver car uh, looks uh, at the, or invokes callback, driver callbacks directly. In those cases, uh, which I will refer to as pass-through bus types, uh, the bus type uh, set of callbacks may be replaced with a PM domain set of callbacks. So PM domain is just a, just a power management kind of replacement of a bus. It does all, uh, all of the things that the bus would do, except that PR, PM domains can be used for uh, multiple drivers on multiple buses at the same time. Like for, uh, say, the ACPI PM domain can be used for platform devices and uh, I2C devices, SPI devices, and all of that. And it does, it kind of bypasses bus and, uh, and does, it takes the role of the bus, essentially, in, in power management. It may talk to the device directly and is responsible for, inv for invoking driver callbacks. Okay, so. All of that is kind of complicated, but that, all of that has to be taken into account when you want to integrate PM runtime with system-wide power management. The next thing is devices that are already in suspend during system-wide suspend 
may, want, may need to be reconfigured. In the photo, there is a bridge undergoing a reconfiguration. That, that looks kind of scary, but. Yeah, yes, yes it is, yeah. But yeah, okay. So the question was, it was about the photo, not the <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do, uh, but not not only uh, from Poland, okay. But anyway, so that this, the, the, there is a, the, the in the photo there is a bridge undergoing a reconfiguration. Yes, it is most Gdansk in Warsaw, Poland. So yeah, but the, the, so you know, devices may need to be reconfigured. Now the reasons why may be multiple. Like most importantly, that is related to wake up. Uh, that is related to wake up, and uh, the reason why is because PM runtime always enables the, the uh, wake up device, uh, or device wake up, sorry. Device wake up is always enabled by PM runtime. The reason why is because PM runtime thinks that if there is something going outside the device that may interact with the device, it's, it's, it's good to know about it. Because the, this, this, this is expected to be transparent, so, uh, so if, if the device is, is configured to, to handle something, you know, some external events that also that has, that, that should also happen when the device is suspended. So we, the, so PM runtime enables device wake up. System wide power management on the other hand has a, has a switch which can be operated by user space for every device. And if user space says, oh, I don't want this device to wake up the system from sleep, uh, then the, it will write disable to this, uh, to this attribute. And then uh, the, the, there is a difference between PM runtime and system-wide power management with respect to device wake up. And in that case, if the device has been suspended uh, at, in the working state, it may need to be resumed just in order to to disable wake up before the system goes to sleep. Uh, that doesn't, it, it may or may not be necessary. That depends on the device, on the on the bus, and on other things, on what PM domain is used on it. But that it may be necessary to resume the device. Uh, another complication is that, actually this is SeaWorld in San Diego. And uh, and uh, and uh, these are like uh, orca show in the, in the in the so uh, kind of intermittent react interactions, right? Because the uh, orcas and, and humans are different species and live in different environments and don't live together, basically. So can only interact intermittently. But anyway, uh, the devices can interact in intermittently as well. So I have one example of that which is sometimes in order to remove power from one device, you need a different device to, to handle it for you. Like you have a, uh, a, a device, with, let's say a PCI device, which, which has some, which, which is kind of a PCI device with, with a complicated, uh, you know, part behind the PCI interface and it needs to be uh, the, the, to remove power from it, you may need to talk to a PM power management unit on a uh, on the platform or in the SOC, okay? And in order to do that, you may need you may need to carry out an I square C transaction between the power management unit and your driver. So you need you need to send a a, a command to to a power management unit in the platform in order to, to uh, remove power from this device. For that, you need a I square C controller to be on, right? It cannot be suspended. So you have to resume the controller, carry out the I square C transaction, tell the power management unit to, 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 to remove power from this device, and then the device can be suspended. So this is kind of an, an intermittent reaction, I, interaction I, 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 uh, I have in mind. So, in order to do something to the device, you may need to resume another device and use it for, 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 
to carry out that action, but it is not necessary for the target device uh, on a regular basis. Like, okay. Interestingly enough, this can happen during system suspend. Because the <laughs> you may need to remove power from devices when you suspend them in during system suspend transition. And you may need to restore power to devices when you resume them during the system resume. Okay. Uh, so all of those things get in the way when you want to uh, when you want to uh, handle suspended devices uh, transparently and you want to reuse callbacks. There are ways to do it. The, the, those ways are not. I'm going to list them here or talk talk about each of them a bit, uh, but they are not like um, very very well. Uh, integrated with each other they they are they have use cases in which they in which they are applicable there are use ca there, are, there are cases in which they are not and none of them is ideal so first of all there is a direct complete optimization and the idea is as follows you say that a device is suspended to start with now I in the prepare phase of device suspend uh, the, the callback from the driver or bus type for it may return a value that is, that is greater than zero. And then the driver car will see, oh, this device is suspended and, uh, and the prepare callback returns something positive. So I can, uh, I can actually uh, keep the device in suspend or the, it may remain suspended. In that case, uh, the, uh, the driver core will actually uh, skip all of the other phases of suspend and resume for this device and will only invoke the complete callback on the way back. So this is a direct, direct complete thing. It is optional. You have to, as I said, return the value that is uh, greater than zero from prepare. It has limitations. Uh, that, uh, the limitations are... Um, the I have a question. Okay. Yeah. In the previous slide, uh, if you were talking, can you go to the previous slide? Okay. So, uh, okay. sorry. Yeah. So, in this case, uh, the device suspend and device system are talking about system wide suspend the same sequence. Mm -hmm. But the prepare, uh, the prepare function, we're expecting the driver to return a positive number if the driver had already put the device in runtime suspend, right? Uh, not if. I, th this, is a if uh, this is a necessary condition. So if the device is runtime suspended yeah. and prepare returns a positive number, it doesn't have to. It may return a positive number. Okay. And that's when this triggers. Okay. Uh, but the, uh, the limitations are that the, uh, the, the it can only be done safely if all of the children and and consumers on the on the of the target device also you also use this optimization because otherwise it, the device may be suspended and somebody may want it or may need to use it to suspend itself. And also the, uh, the intermittent uh, interactions I, I, I was talking about are not covered because if, the, if something is needed, if something is needed in this phase, if the device is needed in this phase by another device or for handling the other, another device, uh, then this doesn't work, right? Okay, uh, the, another way to, uh, to that has been proposed and it is used in multiple places in the kernel is to use the wrappers around PM runtime callbacks in order to, uh, to, pr to kind of provide uh, system-wide uh, power management callbacks. Okay, Ra wrapped buildings here. In the so the, the, this also has, pr well, so first of all, why, why, why is it necessary to use a wrapper in the first place? Well, it may be necessary in the pass-through case where the bus type doesn't handle the uh, that does the, it doesn't provide any callbacks, and the driver car calls the driver callback directly. Because in that case, if you want to point your uh, system-wide, say suspend uh, callback pointer to your runtime PM suspend routine, that routine may not 
now uh, it may in principle it may be invoked when the device is, is already suspended in which case uh, it, it would be bad right to, to run it twice in a row on the same device so there needs to be a check uh, for is, is the device suspended in that callback obviously for PM runtime it is not necessary so it is better to, to have a wrapper that will do the check and do something else in addition to it uh, again this is a uh, an approach with limitations uh, and uh, and that's mostly because the, because of the way it is done in practice in the kernel of sorry Testman didn't work <laughs> <laughs> yeah the <laughs> graphics uh, okay uh <laughs> Okay, uh, so um, so first of all, it does it, 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 it the way it is implemented is is by invoking mi middle layer PM runtime callbacks in, in addition to driver to the driver. So the wrapper actually does the whole PM runtime transition during system wide suspend or resume. That may not work in general. It works in certain cases. It does work in general. It disables runtime PM when it when it is run because it has to use the middle layer uh, uh, callbacks from PM runtime. Uh, also, uh, the it it kind of is the, the the approach used by it in by by those wrappers in the handling of suspended devices during resume is kind of questionable. Because it, they, it, they they only look at the usage counter of PM runtime and the uh, child counter of PM runtime uh, to decide whether or not to leave the devices in suspend. It may not be sufficient in the majority of cases. Okay, so the the, the photos here are illustrations of something that was, looks impressive, but there's something wrong with it. So like, this is a leaning tower in Pisa, obviously. And this is, the, well, the, so that is in Warsaw. Uh, and the, the thing that went wrong here is that the, this building looks unfinished. And the reason why is that it had a windshield like this one uh, at the top, but that windshield burned down. And then when, it, when the pieces of it were falling during the, the, the fire, uh, it actually uh, damaged the, 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 the glass panels on the on the facade, <coughs> so they had to remove them. And so this is like a, yeah, an example where in some, so it looks impressive, but it is not quite there, <laughs> like those call, callback wrappers. Okay, uh, now the, the most recent attempt to use, to, 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 uh, um, to do that, or to, to make this, uh, the, the, uh, the des desired things happen, was to use driver flags. So drivers can set those flags on the device when they, these two are, are related to uh, direct complete. So I'm not going to talk about them. This is a, this is to say that the device doesn't need to be resumed from the driver perspective. So the bus type or driver core, yeah. The bus type or driver core doing the suspend will not but try to resume the device if the, f if the flag is set. <coughs> unless it thinks that it needs to do that by itself. Uh, and that flag also uh, obviously says that the driver wants the device to be left in, in suspend during system resume. So it is, uh, still there are coverage gaps in those, in, in that approach too. Because even if you set the flags and do and you know and, and provide the same callback for uh, point point your callback pointers to the same callback for PM runtime and system wide suspend resume, there's still uh, it doesn't cover the intermittent interactions that are possible. If your device is in suspend, it was left in suspend by the bus type, and then somebody wants it during the, the late stage of, uh, of a system suspend, and you, then th this doesn't work. And also, the, this for, for callback reuse, you need to, you need to set the uh, uh, smart suspend flag, which is kind of, kind of ugly or kind of inconvenient because it should be sufficient to just point the callbacks to the, to the same routine and be done. 
without setting a flag in addition to it. All right. Uh, the, the, these are kind of illustration of that, the buildings that are, uh, you know, kind of left in, uh, in a bad shape, uh, even though the, the, the area around them has improved a lot. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, what, what can we do? So, so uh, uh, obviously, there, there is a need, yeah, there is a need to, uh, to, to, to like, combine all of those methods together. So, so if one driver uses this way of uh, uh, to, to, uh, to handle the problem I, I was talking about, and the other uh, driver uses a different approach, they should work together anyway. Uh, and the intermittent, intermittent interactions should be covered. Today, they aren't. Okay, so there are, there are two observations that can be made. Uh, that this, the first one I, I already talked about. So devices cannot be runtime suspended during system-wide operations because, the, because of the, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, user counter incrementation in up front in the prepare phase. Uh, and, and the second observation, which also is important, there are two cases, uh, two reasons why the, why PM runtime can be used during system-wide uh, power management transitions. First of all, it may be used from from a, uh, from, from a callback running in a <coughs> in a system-wide power management flow for the same device. Like for example. The driver sees that, oh, I need to resume the device because of the wake up setting. So it will, it will use PM runtime for that. Or a bus type can, can see the same thing. And the other case is obviously that it may be called from somewhere else. So now the idea or the, what can be done here is that, well, if the uh, PM runtime is called from the, from the callback of the same device, just run it. It can be run, it can, because it is, it belongs to the flow, it, this is the same device which is handled, we, we can just run it. In other cases, it, uh, it, it depends, right? So if it is called after any, after system-wide PM has done anything to the device, we have to fail it. Because otherwise, it may it may try to undo <laughs> what uh, what was done by the system uh, system wide PM. Uh, uh, in the other case, uh, the right approach, in my opinion, and this is something that I, I wanted to like. This is why the talk is given today. <laughs> the second case, in my opinion, would be to defer if we see that somebody needs a device during the uh, system-wide transition, say during system suspend, that indicates that this may be an intermittent interaction and the device may be needed by somebody to do something to another device. In that, in that case, it would be good to just defer the suspending of this device to the, to the latest possible time and allow intermittent reactions to happen. If we do that, then we don't have to block PM runtime during system-wide suspend and resume. And then we can possibly get rid of uh, callback wrappers because they, they really don't help in general. Which, so even if you wrap the driver callbacks like here, the bus may still want to talk to the device and we'll, we'll do that regardless of, of the wrapper. <laughs> so in the general case, Callback wrappers don't help. They only help in the in the pass-through case, really, and in some PM domain cases. So, so again, if if what I said is done, we could possibly get rid of the wrappers and, uh, and use the direct complete uh, direct complete uh, optimization when possible, and then the, uh, handle the other cases in a transparent way that. I was talking about. Okay, that's it. 30 seconds. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, if you have any more questions, please ask them or we can talk in the hallway.